Welcome everyone to the Voice of Terminus show. I have Josh with us today. Say hello, Josh. Hey guys. Then we got Lex with us. Say hello. What's up, people? And in the background, we have the wonderful Shy with us. Say hello, Shy. Hello. And Shy, as usual, will be grabbing thoughts, ideas, suggestions uh, throughout the discussion and questions, of course, to ask us as we go throughout this show. Today's topic is on teleportation and binding. We will be looking at this from a world scale, long distance travel, short distance travel, from a combat scale, who should be able to you know, te uh, teleport during combat, if at all. We'll be looking at this from a player perspective, which classes should be able to do what with teleportation. And have a look also at the um, game itself, what it could offer us when it comes to binding and teleportation. So, um, we know in a lot of MMOs, some classes can open up portals or open up some ancient rings or stuff like that. We also know that uh, binding is a thing. And um, I want to look at binding first, basically. When we look at the game itself, we know there's nine races out there. Um, depending on the alignment, if there's going to be an alignment system, you're going to have good, evil, and uh, neutral. Do you think that all the neutral classes should be able to bind in any of those cities? Do you think it should be something where you might have to still kind of earn that trust or build up some kind of faction to be able to bind in these cities and of course i want to discuss what should be the binding point in most in most games it's normally the tavern where you could bind um do you see any other useful places to um be able to bind yourself uh who wants to kick it off i'll let josh go all right um okay my my first the, the first thing i'll talk about is the neutral races Mm -hmm. uh, I think if good is going to be binding in a good city and cannot bind in an evil city, um, I don't think that a neutral should be able to bind in either city. They should have. There should be neutral cities as well where you have both good and evil there and they bind to those neutral cities per se. So they should just have as many restrictions as the good and the evil side of, of, of the alignments. Mm -hmm. Um, and then in terms of actual binding points, I think that, yeah, I'd say I, I really enjoy the pub. I think it's where everybody can get together, where everybody can have a good chat and, uh, and socialize. So yeah, I think that's, I think it's a great place. What about you, Lex? In terms of binding between different alignments, I feel it really needs to hold true to the culture that they're going to. For instance, Scar don't care if you're neutral. They don't care if you're good. They don't care if you're evil. They don't like you, period. They don't even like Scar. So you're probably going to have to go through a lot of pain and suffering to earn the right to bind around there. And to me, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, me as a Scar, I, sh I should have to really work for the ability or at least the permission to bind in a neutral area but i have to work double the amount to get into a good area mm. so it's kind of like levels of difficulty yeah as long as yeah. the the culture of whatever race you are supports that i mean if ogres and gnomes get along and gnomes are neutral ogres are evil as long as they get along and there's a reason for them to get along, then, I mean, I don't see any reason why you should ever, you know, deny that and make them work as hard as a scar. Mm -hmm. It just, there needs to be something to, to yeah. support it. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, that's yeah. why I kind of uh, look at the binding as well. You know, I want to see something different. You know, because in most games, you can go, you're, you're, you're a good race, you can go into any city that's good, and you can just go and bind there. Boom, you're done. That's mm -hmm. it. Um... I would like to see it be true to the law, to the how the races are with you know within with their other races like the scar for instance. They don't like anybody, 
They hate everybody. They don't like anybody. They don't trust anyone. So any any of the other eight races trying to bind or get to, <coughs> or become friends with a scar is going to have a hard time. It's going to take longer to work on that relationship. There might right. be there might be the race like the humans who are you know hey, we'll let anybody in. You seek refuge, right. you can come to us. So some races might have it easier to to bind with other races. Some might not. And I think you know. That adds to the challenge, that adds to the risk versus reward, that adds mm -hmm. to the flair of playing the different races, trying it out, seeing what they have to offer. Um, I think that's how I would do it right. as well. And yeah. so, um, I'd say build the well, wall. Come yeah. <laughs> I'd say build the wall. Um, I'm going to clarify something because Rainbow Part 6 actually comes up with a lot of really good uh, points because I really generalize what I said. Mm. Assuming you can bind through an NPC, we'll just use the Soul Binder from EverQuest 1. That would be faction-based. Another player give it, having the ability to bind you to a point, like the Bind Soul ability or spell from a lot of casters in EverQuest 1, <coughs> as an example, mm. that wouldn't be faction-based. You could still bind like outside Scargoal and be KOS there, as long as it was a player that did it or an item or something. But if you were going to use an NPC, something that would have a faction attached to it, you would have to gain faction. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that totally. Definitely. They should be faction-based. No, mm -hmm. you know, I'd like to see it, see different ways, and actually maybe even add different levels of bind points. So if you want to bind yourself in a city where you know you're going to be safe, you know, you're going to have to do that. You're gonna, you have to go the extra mile. But you can also bind outside the city or in, in the outskirts there, but there's a greater risk towards you. You know, you keep KOS mm -hmm. comes in play, um, stuff like that could happen, you know, where right. where you have different levels of difficulty for your binding. So it's not just, hey, work your way to get befriended with the Scar, go into their tavern and bind. No, you have to actually go through multiple tiers, basically, to earn that right. I think I would add a little twist to it, and it would help also um, offer people ways to get where they're going in their own time. So, you know, you might not be as fast as everybody else and building up your faction, but you still want to be binded towards Scargol. So you go and bind outside, because that's the easier access point for you. And then you can later on work on getting into the city if that's your desire. Another aspect they could also have with binding is that if you're binding to a place that is not your natural faction, you might have to uh, do certain things for that city to keep up the goodwill and allow you to bind at that, that place as well. Mm -hmm. That's yep. another thing to look at, yeah. So um, I, li I like that idea of the tiers, but I would go in a different direction with it myself. I would do something like Say you're you're bound with a certain NPC. We'll just say thrown fast. You you've been bound there forever. Why not do something over time where the longer you're bound to a place, because this way it could just be a fixed point in the world through a, a player binding you. The longer you're bound there, the faster it is for you to get there. So, like, for example, if you had a spell that would take you back to your bind point, that would be faster. Mm. Yeah. Or if you die, perhaps you come back with more of your hit points. I mean, just because you're, you're over time, you're just attuned to it. It would, in my opinion, that would kind of promote, like, being very smart about your bind point. But because, like, if you're going to be going into a dungeon quite often because you love it or just where your friends want to go, you might want to bind early, get prepared, you know, and then you might get some of these bonuses. But the bonuses shouldn't be so good that you are afraid to rebind. It's just a bonus for like, oh, you've been bound for so long, let's just make things a little easier on you. Yeah. My headset's kind of off. Give me a second. <laughs> there we go. My battery died. I had to plug it in. So I missed half of what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Not that important. Don't worry about it. Basically, it was the longer you're bound to a certain area, get some minor bonuses. 
to promote mm. being smart about your bind so, points. So I've got a question about that. Yeah. Oh, you know, because you mentioned having like a bind spell where you basically click on a spell and then you get teleported to your bind point or whatever whatever it is. How would, mm -hmm. how would you like to see that working? Let's say, for instance, now I've started off in Throne Fast to bind. Um, I've now binded with... Um, Faith Isle, I binded with the dwarves, I binded with the halflings and everything. I, but I'm now physically bound with the halflings. Mm. Would you like to see the spell basically kind of open up and show you, hey, there's a bind point for you, there's a bind point for you, there's a bind point for you, but this is your active bind point? Or would you just like it to be, you click on that and that's your bind point? Um, to me... Because I, I played EverQuest for so long, mm -hmm. I would probably favor just out of habit only having one bind point at a time. Mm -hmm. But like with the faction idea, it's just if your factions hunt up, they allow you to bind here through an NPC, giving <laughs> people who don't have spells to bind their position an option in the area. But they gotta earn it. Mm -hmm. If they don't want to earn it, then you have to bring a friend or make a friend kind of thing. Because to me, that would... As a Dire Lord, I don't expect to be able to bind anywhere. Mm. I, I'm i assuming I'm going to only be able to bind at one place at a time. Yeah. So if I want to bind you know, someplace that I really can't because my faction's too low, I'll just say Throne Fast again. Um... If I really want to bind there for whatever reason, maybe I'm farming, then I should talk in OC or shout or whatever channels I have available, seek out someone who can actually bind me somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then I have to be smarter where I want them to bind me because that's the other way it patrols yeah. and sucks. Yeah. It adds a little depth to that whole scenario that I personally find improves my immersion. Uh, Josh, anything you want to add to that? No, um, I agree with that side of it. Um, I think that you should have a choice. Um, and uh, whether you need to do it through a friend or whatever the case may be, then so be it. Cool. So let's go and have a look at um, some of the travel, the teleportation aspects of it from the world scale. We have long distance travel and we have short distance travel. Now, um, we know in multiple games you go to a bell or or whatever, you knock on it, it opens up a world map, you click on where you want to go, boom, your load screen loads up, you travel there. Um, now we know that Pantheon or the or the world itself, there's at least two continents. We know there's we know there's a third one, and um, there's a big sea in between them. So. What kind of what kind of long distance travel options would you like to see, and how would you like to see it done? Should it be something where you could technically just click on a bell and then you teleport from one continent to the other, or from one one city on one continent to the other city on a different continent, or would you like to see it done smartly, where maybe you go to the docks, you get onto a boat, and you travel over? Um, or you can only teleport in smaller locations, so shorter distance, or, or do you want to see long distance travel available? Um, I, I, I really don't. I'm, I'm not in for the click one thing and you instantly teleported somewhere else. Uh, this is a world, a world that should seem, it's, it might be high fantasy, but I still want to be able to work for, for what I want to do within that fantasy world. Mm -hmm. So for me, quick travel from one location in an instant to another is a no-no. Yep. I, I really love the, the whole shipping situation in, in EverQuest, um, uh, traveling between areas on a ship, and then maybe having random events that, that, that occur. Um, to you while you're traveling on those type of things. So it could take the form of shipping, it could take caravanning, it could take, um, uh, I don't know, uh, mountaineering, for instance. Who knows? 
but uh, there should be different modes and it should take a little bit of time to get there and that's where the social the social mm -hmm. aspect comes into it for me so yeah that's my thinking i'm pretty close to the same page as josh mm -hmm. I don't have a whole lot of game time these days, so convenience really does improve my personal experience now. So running for two hours isn't really an option for me. Yeah. But what's a 10-minute boat ride? You know, exactly. that's nothing. Or, I mean, heck, just make it a five-minute. You know? So... Uh, go so ahead. I was, I was gonna. I was just gonna add some 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 thoughts to this. You know, when it comes to the 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 the, the travel aspect of things, uh, long distance, short distance. The way I would love to see it done. If I've never been to an area before a zone, then I can't go to an NPC or go to a bell or go to anything. Click on it and go there. I have to basically discover that point. Um, Maybe I have to gain some faction in that area first. I don't want to just run over something, run into that zone. You've discovered a new zone, and now this this te this teleportation point or this travel point is now available to me. Um, I would have to do something to earn it, um, to to be able to travel there. Um, when it comes to the travel, though, would you like to see something like maybe like Josh already mentioned, getting onto a caravan that takes you from A to B? or renting out a horse that takes you from A to B, or whatever other possibility is out there. Why can't I hear Lex? I don't know. <laughs> My bad. I'm coughing and sneezing a lot, so I'm muting myself. But um, we're, we're all pretty familiar with EverQuest 2 and their horse relay system for fast travel. Mm -hmm. Personally, I thought that was remarkably stupid. Because mm. if I'm the one, if I'm the only one on the horse, why can't I make it go left or right? Why can't I make it stop? You know, I am, for all intents and purposes, the driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, if they were to do something similar to, with like that, but make it a carriage or something like that, another mode of transportation where I'm not supposedly in control, mm -hmm. then I'm cool with that. Because it makes sense, and I'm not sitting there questioning why. Yeah. Um, I yeah. enjoyed the Griffins from EverQuest 2 because they they were very good for sightseeing. <clears throat> yeah. But honestly, I'm a big fan of, and I say this as a person who is, I have my my moments where depression gets the better of me, and I don't want anything to do with anybody. I love wizard and druid teleportation. Because even when I'm having a bad day, it forces me to talk to people. Mm -hmm. It forces me to interact with the world in terms of other people that are in it. And I have made good friends doing that. It helps the game feel more alive because all of a sudden now you've got like almost like a taxi system. Do you ever quest wonders know exactly what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. It creates its own economy. And it just makes sense. Mm. Yeah. I'm not a fan of anything where I can go click, click, and I'm there. Yeah. Period. Even with having very restricted play times these days, I would rather travel for 5, 10, maybe even 15 minutes at the max without having to talk to another player. Mm-hmm. But a player should always be there to give you the faster option because it promotes socializing. Yeah. Exactly. Anything? Yeah. Uh, I agree. I think I think that if you are going to travel, I'll just add to what I said earlier on, and I think Lex raises good points, that, you know what, if I'm going to travel for 10 minutes and just travel, Make that that make that journey interesting. Make make the make it something to for you to be on, either on your guard or relaxing. Maybe something you could do in game itself to pass the time. Maybe a little dice game or something like that with other players. Mm. Um, so so you've got those little things that you can can play. 
uh, while you're making that 10 minute trip so i'll add i'll add some uh, features to to this to see because uh moko also um pointed out something as well like if you want to travel with the boat they might need supplies or they might need repairs on their boat or anything like that before they can set off to travel so adding something like that maybe to the caravans where you might you know hey you want to travel with us we don't have room but you can you know tag along with us and help protect us you know from bandits and stuff like that as a kind of mini game so so mm -hmm. you basically you're following this route this caravan and you're helping protecting you know you might you might get the ride cheaper um, you can also take the ride where you don't go on the protection route. You sit in the caravan, safe and snug, tuck, tucked up, but you pay a higher cost for it. Um, you could do the same with, with you know, if, if they have horses that you can basically rent. So I, I definitely get where Lex is coming from, and I think if I'm going to rent a horse, I should be the one in control. You know, as long as I have the connection points from A to B, I know where, where to go, then I should be able to rent a horse that will take me from A to B, but I should be able to control it. But maybe I might have to go and feed the horse, clean its hooves, make, put on new hooves for it, because, hey, it's just come up from a long journey. Something like that to add to the... It's, the little, random, it's little random events in mm -hmm. to travel that will make it feel more acceptable or more believable, or even, you could just say, more immersive. Yeah. You're, you're following a caravan. You have a bunch of NPCs. You're walking along with it. The wheel falls off of a wagon, so now you have to collect wood so that they can fix it or whatever. Or, yeah. or you if you don't collect, if you're not a gatherer, then maybe you have to protect someone that does. Yeah. Um, you know, or if you just rent a horse, you can control it, but you only have it for so long. I mean, that's kind of hard to justify, but it would make you want to get from A to B faster. Yeah. Without yeah, screwing around. But, you know, it's the t I don't like the time limit at the same time because it's like if I ride a horse, it doesn't just go poof. Yeah. But, you know, th th that would be you know, that would have to be kind of the restriction on it. You know, you if you could if you could rent a horse that you do control to take you from A to B, there would have to be some kind of limitation on it. Otherwise, it's the amount that you've got and you're traveling around on it. Um, having. Oh, we just lost Lex Lex's camera. Uh, hopefully he'll be back. There he is. Um, <laughs> and what I would still like to see, though, is everything that we talked about with you know adding these little mini games or adding different options. Exactly, that's what it should be. It should be an option to you, the player, to decide what risk versus reward you want to take. You want to take the easy route, spend more coin to get to to where you're going at a faster rate. You want to have a bit of fun while you're doing it. Um, and you also mentioned the word random events. Now, if that is something mm. that they could do, that would be freaking awesome. You don't know what's going to happen on this on this ride from um, continent A to continent B or from town A to town B. Like Lexa said, you're traveling along. Last time, it went smooth. You're sitting in a caravan. You're traveling along, chatting in chat with your friends or the group or whatever or with some random strangers that are also in there with you. But now, this time, the wheel breaks midway. You yeah. now have to go out and gather some wood and fix this wheel. I mean, that would be so cool if, if something like that could be done in a game like this where you have random events happen. Because that's what it's all about. The randomness yeah. makes the game yeah. interesting. The, it adds to the challenge of the game as well. Right, and and the key to it is like we'll use the caravan part. Maybe you're in a wagon, so you do move much faster. The key is not to make it happen so frequent that you're like afraid to use it because you're like, God, yeah. what's going to happen yeah. this time? Exactly. But it's like maybe one in every eight, one in every ten times that it goes that maybe something can happen. You know, where you get attacked. Something bad happens, or mm -hmm. you know, who Ooh. knows? But, but, but a nice got, thing, but, a, but I just one more thing. I just want to add to the caravan thing quickly. That maybe the caravan owner then prevents you with a caravan specific item that nobody else has after saving his bacon, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all I want to say. All right, so yeah. I, 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 if they had something like that, you could make those events crazy rare. 
Exactly. A, another way you could do it as well is tie it to the weather. Have different events yeah. affect it by the weather. A thunderstorm happens. Now thunder oh, hits yeah. the caravan or something like that, or it starts raining, Ro roads, there's a flood. Roads get muddy. Yeah, roads yep. get muddy. The wagon get gets stuck. You have to go to the back and help push it. And there could be a mini game where it's just like mm. a, a little dot on a slider, and you got to like get that it in a be. certain spot, press, press a button, and then it pushes yep. it forward a little bit, then it gets narrower. You know, and then all of a sudden it's like, ha-ha, we're free. Yeah, that would be, you know, that's another way of doing it. And you could even tie that into maybe even GM events. You know, yeah. Something that exactly. GMs control, where they can mess right. around with our travel. Hey, they just found out that a bunch of people have rented some caravans in Thronefast, and they're heading towards Faith. Oh, guess what? <laughs> we're going to have some fun with this. And mm -hmm. connecting it to the weather also, you could have, like, um, it's, it's really cold <clears> now. So everything's frozen up. It's really icy. So the caravans, you know, you can have ice goblins coming out and attacking the caravan. Stuff like that is as random events. And like Lex has said, right. it shouldn't be something that's frequent where it makes you go, oh, again, mm -hmm. again, I'm get, I, I need to be at a certain location at a certain time. I'm meeting up with a group to go into a dungeon. I don't have time to deal with this. It's something that should, you know, randomly happen in every blue moon, like at the very beginning of EverQuest 2 when the Master Chest dropped. Everybody remembers yep. that. It used to be very rare that you got a Master Chest. And that's how these events should happen. It should be very right. rare. It, once in a blue well, moon that something happens. These, these events should be rare, like I said. But yeah. not just because a lot of them can be very inconvenient. But because you want them to be rare because it generates stories from players. Where it's like, okay, guys, I'm going to take the boat from one continent to another. I'll be there in eight minutes. Well, you, you do the, the zone thing to the next continent, and then you see yourself going to port. Maybe there's a storm on the other side of the world there. The boat capsizes, and you got to swim to shore. And we've already heard that there's going to be some nasty stuff in the water. So you best believe I'm going to freak out, and I'm going to start going straight for land. <coughs> yep. And maybe you're with a buddy. Maybe they're on the shore and they see you and they see tentacles come up and just grab you and you're like, oh, remember that time? It's like, oh God, don't even talk about so, that. <coughs> to kind of move along, um, <coughs> would you guys like to see some kind of adding to the long distance travel again and short distance, of course, as well? Would you guys also like to see some ways of mass travel or group travel options available? Yes. But... It's going to be very difficult to pull off group or mass travel. Well, not so much mass travel. Mass travel to me is kind of like the boats from EverQuest 1. Mm -hmm. You basically wait on the dock, everyone gets on, and you go. You can yep. hold a lot of people. Group travel, it's, you know, what happens if one person happens to be, you know, two zones over and someone just happens to trigger it and all of a sudden off you go. You know, you're still wasting time because you got to wait for that other person to get there. Yeah. Um, so that would be very tricky to pull off well. Mm. But <clears throat> I would rather not have it than to have something <clears throat> like that put in poorly, mm. where it's like, oh, you're at the dungeon, you click a stone, and everybody pops up. Yeah. It's like, uh, no. Yeah. Granted, I'll change. I'll change my I'll change my tune when I log in, and I've only got an hour to play. But I realize this. Yeah. I mean. In some ways, it would be cool to have it, but, um, you know, like some people already said, it should cost a ton to do it. Um, there shouldn't even be risks. I know I would love to see risks towards it as well. Imagine, yes. you know, you go to this NPC that can group travel you or whatever, or you go to a certain area, and a, a spire, a ring or whatever. Now, uh, again, rare random events happen. It's, it might be some kind of um, spire from the old gods that we've now learned to activate. You can make it a community thing that we can unlock as a, as a community or something like that. We get, it gets rebuilt. It's a world event. We yeah. rebuild this. Now, once in a blue moon, we might get ported all into six different places or five <laughs> different areas. Or somebody gets you know popped out somewhere else, but a rare event. I annoying. always remember. Yeah, no, I always remember in um, uh, what's that? Elite. 
uh, the old elite back in, that was built back in the 1980s. And uh, when you used to uh, port from one spot to the next in space, mm -hmm. uh, you could end up in, in rogue space, basically, and get attacked by these, these, these ships out of nowhere. <laughs> so it would be great for something like that, where you never know, there could be that 0.1% chance you end up on an island you know, somewhere maybe you know that's 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 the risk of it you know this 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 thing that we've un, un you know uncovered discovered or whatever we've re, you know we, we've rebuilt it or anything like that there's hardly any cost towards it but there might be a greater risk in using it you might right. get you might get ported not 100 percent completely all the way you might get ported right to the middle smack between those two points so now you gotta you gotta think about where first you gotta find out where the hell am i and yeah. then you got to move and carry on the rest of the distance, and it could, you know, it could be a random thing. You know, one person gets ported there, one person gets ported there, one person gets ported there, or the whole group gets ported only halfway, and make that random as well would be pretty cool. Um, and the reward for using this system is obviously there's no real cost towards it. There's just the right. risk. Yeah. yeah, I mean that that could be your payment for getting on this fast travel is like you provide protection. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. And it just sometimes you luck out and it's like, oh, nothing happened. Other times you're just like, oh my God. Yep. Just shoot me now. Nightmare stuff. So let's go and have a look at the teleportation from a player controlled teleportation spells. We know there's going to be, we know we have magic classes, we have mages. And you know we have druids, we have shamans, we have we have all kinds of different classes in this game. Which classes do you think, if any, and how, should have a teleportation ability for either the single player or for a group? Do you think there should be something like that? Would you like to see something like that? And how would you like to see it done? We'll start with you, Josh. Well, I think it should be given to rogues this time. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow melding, shadow jumping. Um, no, I think um, I think the the magic the magic users um, should have something um, that can teleport people, but it must be at some sort of a cost. It can't be. It can't just be easy, easy and quick. And people should work for it. I mean, uh, to actually get that one teleport to a far away. <laughs> place you must be able to have gone there and and gotten pretty high faction with that place yeah. i always kind of mused back in the day that you know group teleportation should be a group event where maybe there's a mini game every if you know i'll just use the the slider with a the dot they got to get it in this little narrow spot to be accurate everyone has to do it now, if everyone does poorly, who the frick knows what's going to happen? If everyone's, you know, pretty close to accurate, no problem, right? And that, and granted, I mean, you could always just say, like, all oh, the caster is casting spells. Like, well, it's a big spell. Why not give them something to do then instead of just sitting here and waiting 14 seconds for it to go off, you know? It's like, whoa, this is so much fun but if you're a good <laughs> if you're a good skilled player and you rarely mess up that's going to come up people are going to know that it's like you know you never really mess anything up so mm -hmm. you are a skilled whatever class i still think it should be i think wizards for sure you know so it's like your reputation as a transporter is very very good so people might spend a little extra in their donations towards you because you got the skills to pay the bills mm -hmm. to swap back to the 80s for a second but if you're not that good people will only use you in a pinch and that's going to be your incentive to get better because your reputation is affecting what's going on yeah yeah i definitely agree that it should be the wizard and uh, just to quickly knock back on a few things that Josh said and you said, I'll start with you, Lex, with that clicking, you know, that little bar where you click in the middle, that could be something that they could use for the uh, group travel with the, the, the spire that costs you nothing. 
everybody clicks on it. Now, depending on how we've all done, either we're lucky and we make it to our destination or we don't. That would be a cool way to do it. Now, right. what you said, Josh, with the Vogue, slightly off topic here, but still <laughs> part of teleportation um, with the shadow. I think that would be a cool freaking spell for a rogue to have where he could put a member in the group who is actively in aggro and in danger into a kind of shadow realm, kind of like a like a phase. You put them into yeah. the shadows where where basically it's kind of like a de-aggro for players. Yeah. For the other player. I think that would be a pretty cool spell to have and then um, just sidetracking there a little bit. Um... I think the wizard would be, when it comes to the mages, the class that would be able to open up or use, you know, spires or anything like that, or or open up a teleportation ring of some sort for long distance travel. But it should also be something that would have to be discovered. And maybe there's different kinds of magics out there that he has to learn to understand. So you might have something that's, you might have a spire where it's just fulfilled with dark magic. So you might have to learn about that. It might be written in some, some ancient text that he doesn't quite understand. He has to go out and earn that. Um, another one that I want to look at, also not in the way of, in forms of, 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 of greater travel though, is the summoner. It's a summoner. The summoner should be able to tell, you know, to summon a black hole, a portal of sorts. Now, right. this is where I would see the risk come in with that. He can summon, or she can summon a portal of sorts, but going through there comes with risks. You might get damage here. <laughs> you might. Um, you, might, you might come up to the other side of rabbit for a couple seconds. <laughs> something like that, maybe. You might um, only or get teleported completely somewhere else you know within a radius of of where that spell is meant to be going that's how i would kind of like to see it done if they do add something like that for the summoner um but from a combat scale to look at the summoner i would like to see the summoner have a spell like this for itself where it could open right. up a portal and jump short distances to bring itself out of danger i think that would also be pretty cool to see um, yeah the summoner be able to summon itself a portal and basically it was standing in front of the NPCs. Now it's behind the NPCs. It's brought itself out of danger. It de -aggros. That's how I would kind of love to see something like that happen. But when it comes to, to the teleportation or travel of this thing, I think that should be short distance travel with the, with the, with the portal that it could open. But it comes mm -hmm. with a great, great risk. Either it fizzles. It doesn't work. You click on it. You want to go through. It doesn't work. Um, something happened on, on the other realm of existence. Um, it's something that's basically uncontrollable with the summoner. They can summon a, hole, a black hole or a traveling point, but it's something that's, you know, not really reliable. Whereas the wizard, after learning about all of this, and, you know, the better you become, the greater your name becomes throughout the game. People know that, hey, this guy's reliable. He can get me anyway. He's got everything. Boom, you go to him. Are there any other classes, though? We know in EverQuest... I don't know if it was in EverQuest with the Druid Rings, but in EverQuest 2, the Druid had the Druid Rings as well. Would you like to see something like that? I personally, big fan of the Druids, don't really want to see that happen. Oh, thank God, I'm not the only one. Yeah, same. I uh, must admit. It's fairly um, boring. Well, I mean, in EverQuest 1, Druids were crazy strong. I mean, you could heal, you could teleport, you had tons of really good buffs. You had decent damage. You could quad kite, you know, whatever. So I, I felt like in EverQuest 1, the druids should have had teleportation taken away. Mm. I liked the idea of a summoner summoning a portal to a place. And it could maybe pop you any random spot mm. in the zone or something like that. Yeah. Where you're like, ooh, I really got to get there. Click. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Wait, yeah. my, my, right. my arms are now my legs, and my legs are now my arms. <laughs> what <Correct>. have you done? <laughs> but, you know, a, the wizard in EverQuest 1 was a very narrow, narrowly defined class. It was a damage dealer. It was a teleporter. Yeah, the really good ones could solo <laughs> and, and quad kite and stuff. 
But it was something that took a lot of really, really good skill that m- most wizards honestly didn't even really bother with. Mm-hmm. So if they had a monopoly on, we'll say, skillful teleportation, yeah, I'd be all for that. I'd be making friends with, with wizards left, right, and center. Mm-hmm. You could say that a wizard could actually specialize in that, that form. Could be a travel wizard, so to speak. Uh, <coughs> so, in the game. So it's not much of a fighter, but it certainly helps with travel and things like that in the group. Mm-hmm. Buffing, so, that type of thing. So I want to go and look back at the druid again. I mean, we all agree there shouldn't be any kind of teleportation for the druid. And that's our take on it. But druid being an nature's beast, right? having a greater understanding with the environment and, and, and the wildlife and everything. Let's say, for instance, there's bears or wolves in there. Would you guys be fine with some kind of form where maybe the druid has a possibility to tame animals that we can then use for short distance travel? Yeah. I don't see that being a problem. Um... God, that that that's a rough one, because you run into a lot of problems where it's like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tame this deer so that this, my buddy can ride along with me, and then you got this fat freaking ogre riding on something that barely comes up to his knees. You know, well, so, definitely not that. You gotta have the, the <laughs> right. Or let's tame this scale, buddy. Scale. Go, Mister yeah. Ogre, go. Yeah. Um, it would be something that I feel would be far too difficult to add to really be worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to see the gnomes on the backs of squirrels. That's what I want to see. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah. Let gnomes ride the lightning. Their energy. Yeah, it could basically um, be maybe a spell that they 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 can earn basically throughout the zone, and obviously it would be limited on you know the 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 environment itself. Maybe there's an environment where there aren't any natural inhabitants like bears, wolves, and stuff like that. So they can't so they can't summon anything. Or base, so it would be a spell you would click as a druid, and it would basically call, depending on how many people you've got in your group, either six companions, five companions, four companions, and then you mount up, and then off you go. You can travel, and it maybe it, it might only last three minutes or or two minutes or whatever, but it's something, and, and it would have a long, long cooldown as well. So it would be something that's situational. You have to think about when am I going to use this spell? Um, quickly a point. To something that was said in chat, taken away from the ranger then. The way I see a ranger with that is, that's a ranger thing only. Ranger can talk to the animals for himself. You know, mm. he's kind of, because a ranger, I've always pictured a ranger being the, the scout in a group, the one that goes ahead and checks everything out and, and you know, reads tracks and sets traps and can, can you know, Use the hawk to to guide him, get the strength, you know, use a bear to help him out and stuff like that. So it would be something that's more on a personal level. So maybe the ranger might have something like that for himself for short distance travel. Well, see, I'd actually be fine if a ranger or even a druid pulled a Lord of the Rings. Where their idea of fast travel is they call down a giant bird, you know, Mm -hmm. and everybody gets on it. That could also, yeah, I, I would love that. I mean, there's some games out there that do that, where they have... It would, it would make a little more sense mm-hmm. to me, mm-hmm. but it's not... I mean, if they said you couldn't cross continents with it, I'd be fine. Yep. But yeah, same. it can take you to any zone. Yeah, that you've basically right? discovered, obviously. Right, and, and when it comes to something like that, I would rather it, it not be like it, it comes here every time. Put them at the zone line within a, a random space you know mm-hmm. at the zone line so it's like you know you can go here 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 and that way it feels different every time that you land in, yeah. a, in a zone what what, a, what about a shaman hmm. shadow, shadow you, you could you could uh, tec- yeah, wolf, so you could technically uh, do like a yeah like a spirit walk where everyone kind of goes through the ether mm-hmm. you you could justify that I'm just maybe maybe that's a means for the for when you die. Maybe maybe the shaman mm-hmm. when you're dead has has the spirit walk where he can ca- you know cast this spell where now we don't have to run 
long distances to our corpses. Now we're in the spirit realm kind of thing, where we have a... Almost a... like WoW. I don't yeah. know how it is done in WoW, no idea. When you die, you're basically a ghost and you can run through everything to your body. And not necessarily. Maybe you get from the from, from having a shaman that casts a spell, maybe you get a higher run speed or something like that. That's, that's kind of exactly how how WoW does it. When you turn to yeah, ghost, you have run exactly. speed increase. But you're not aggroable. You are a ghost. Nobody can see you, mm -hmm. but you can see other people. Mobs can't aggro you. You basically get to where you die and you just go Except pop back up with all your gear on. So, and to be honest, that feels a little too convenient for me. I mean, that's you know, that's a, and again, you know, this is still also another another thing we'll be discussing later on. Anyway, we do not know anything about the death penalty, death itself. How it's going to be. So far in the streams, we've seen them die. They pop up back at the beginning of the zone. We do not know what they're going to offer players down the road. You know, is there going to be actual death where you're a spirit um, and you have to either go and speak to the ghost and pay a penance to get your corpse back? For, for all we know, there's no bind points at, at all. It's wherever you die, you go to the closest point. Yep. You know, so that's something I think we, we could look at later with the shaman as well. Once we maybe hear more, and obviously when we do our death and death penalty show, we'll definitely, you know, bring that up there. But um, personally, I like the idea of having maybe the shaman have something like in a spirit world. You can even add a mini game there as well, where, mm -hmm. you know, you might be in a spirit world and you have to, you have a certain amount of time to get out of the spirit world before, you know, before taking a higher... Um, penance to, to, to your death or something like that. And the shaman may, might be able to help you with that one. But that's something we'll look at at a later point. Um, so I do like the idea of maybe the ranger or the or the druid calling up some kind of big massive falcon or um, griffin or something like that for the group to jump on and then travel together from one point to, you know, from, from one point to the next. I think that's pretty cool in some way. I do like the fact as well where it's kind of like random, where they have multiple points, and it's going to, it's going to fly to one randomly within that zone. So your experience is always going to be a bit different. Um, the situation you, you're going to be in is always going to be different because we all want that risk, that challenge um, back in our games, and that would add to it. Um, do you, So we've talked about the wizard, the druid, the shaman, the ranger possibilities of doing it are there any other classes out there you guys where you think teleportation in some form of fashion should be available to them or is that well, basically it i think if they do introduce the necro at some point perhaps uh, the necro has some sort of a teleportation via skeletal remains type of thing maybe they can teleport between graveyards or something yeah, yeah. that'd be pretty something cool. like that. with but or maybe access to certain tunnel. Oh, I don't know. But I liked how EverQuest One kind of designed the Necro. Not just because that was my first and and my first love of, of with EverQuest. Everything that they had, well, the majority of things they had were, were to help them because they were all about themselves. Necro were like, yeah, I can heal you, but it's going to hurt me, so I don't want to do it. But if I want to you know, and go invisible, that's self only because I don't care about you. You're on your own. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a cool idea. So we'll, we'll have to look at all of this. The necro, necro as well is kind of like on the death and death penalty situations where I see any forms. Any other classes, though, that you see? Not really. Um, you could technically shoehorn travel in for each class mm -hmm. saying stuff like with with a warrior you know you you have a garrison caravan that takes you places mm -hmm. because you're that high in the, in, in the military well, or whatever well, let's go have a look you could you could you could force it in but mm -hmm. i really don't think it would fit very well at all yeah so let's go let's go have a quick look at that then so instead of you know doing the teleportation player based how it's usually done with you know your wizard your druid or maybe your shaman let's say for instance they did have for each class some form of teleportation or travel 
either it being a portal being open, like you said, maybe a small caravan, um, group travel, single player travel. Would you would you be welcome to that? Would you welcome that from VR if they did something like that, where they said, "Hey, guess what? We're going to go a complete different route. We're going to go and give each player." In some form or fashion, a ways to travel, be it either for themselves, be it either for the group, be it either for an individual with different kinds of um, costs and different kinds of um, usability times. Would you be okay with that? For me, it would obviously have to meet certain criteria. It would have to be just ungodly expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to say that I accept it. I'm, what I will say though, is I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt and let them try it. Mm -hmm. I'm meaning there, if it's in there, cause they want to give it a shot. I'm not going to flip my lid, hit the forums and start crying like a four year old <laughs> over it. I'll try it. I'll tell them what I think, honestly. Mm -hmm. And if I don't like it, I just won't use it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So do I think it? Do I think that has a place in Pantheon? Personally, I do not. Mm. Yep. So let's go look at the combat scale of teleportation. We know in I think EverQuest EverQuest had evac. Mm -hmm. Yep. EverQuest two had evac. But the games have had something similar like that. Would you like to see something like that in Pantheon as well, where certain classes have an evac ability? How would you like to see it be used? Um, in the early days of EverQuest 2, you pressed evac no matter where you were in the zone, everybody got evac to that bind point or the, the location of the evac. Um, do you want to see something like that? Where Would you like to see single evac? Would you like to see group evac? Who should have it? Who shouldn't? Should it be usable during combat? Should it be usable only outside of combat? Would you like to see different things done with it? Who wants to go first? I've never understood why rogues have the evac situation. Um, I understand maybe with the the shadows and just get everybody out there, throw down the sh a smoke bomb type of thing, and use that as 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 getting out. So yeah, I guess I've answered my own question there. That the rogue should have something like that. I find the the mechanic pretty helpful though. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, and pretty good. Now I think it'll make it even more challenging in in um, in this game because if you've worked your way down one or two levels and your return point is two levels up again, to actually fight your way all the way back down there, you have to actually be. It would be stupid for you to actually use an evac at that mm -hmm. point. So yeah, um, but it is very good in terms of keeping your gear and so, making sure that you don't have to go and fight your way to find your gear again. Josh, to, to add on to this, which classes do you think should have some kind of evac? Um, I, w I would say cleric. Uh, I think that the, the uh, it calls down the, the gods, for instance, to, to save the group and and uses that power to, to move them to a safe uh, location, maybe where there's a holy symbol of of that players. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's that's one one class I think should be able to do it. Um, I'd have to think about the other stuff though. Alex, just trying to think back to all the times I've been, I've run groups and raids and all this other stuff. How many times have I actually used evac for its intended purpose? Not that many times because I've always been the kind of person that I would I would push the group to to fight through a hard battle. More often than not, I what I use evac for was, well, you know, we fought down four levels in this in this dungeon. I'm out of I'm out of time. My replacement's at the entrance. Evac, get to the entrance. You guys can start over. I gotta go. Yeah. Very rarely have it's, it's ever been like, oh my god, Evac, we need to get out of here. Because I'm just a fight to the death kind of person. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think that everyone should, well not everyone but a lot of classes should have it an option to almost get a you know 
I call them the oh crap buttons, mm -hmm. to put it politely. Maybe like a rogue, instead of getting an evac, you get like the smoke bomb. Everybody yep. disengages from combat, goes invisible, gives you a chance to back off. Yep. But skills like that have to be expensive either in terms of cooldown, casting time, or reagents. Mm -hmm. Something, or any combination. Um, I think summoners and wizards, it makes sense to have that. Yep. Druids, it makes sense to have that. Or either a druid or a ranger. Mm -hmm. The tank classes, uh, I could maybe see a paladin. Because you could do like, you know, some sort of retreat. Yeah. Um, and I don't see that insultingly, believe it or not. Um, because they would try to protect people. Keep people from dying. Yeah. A warrior and a die lord to me would fight to the bitter end. You know, the ca the wizard be casting evac. That could be a long cast, and the and the warriors up the front line going, "No, don't do it! I got this." Mm -hmm. Um, the mechanic in general, I feel it does have a place in Pantheon. Yeah. Just I would be very <coughs> careful with balancing costs of something like that. I definitely agree with you there. I would definitely like to see a lot of classes have some form of evac. And again, wording it this way, some form. So the wizard, obviously, and maybe the summoner, and maybe the ranger, whatever, they can actually evac you from where you are back to the beginning of the zone or whatever. But like you said, the ranger, uh, the uh, rogue, smoke bomb, now we've got a chance to run away. But guess what? Maybe if we run back, NPCs have respawned, so we're going to be we're going to be put into a bottleneck. We got we got encounters from the left and the right coming, so it's it's different for each of these classes. It comes differently. Um, you know, even the cleric. I could see some form like Josh mentioned with the cleric having some form of evac, some holy symbol, where maybe you know the the gods cast something or whatever, and it's kind of like a a light. A light beam comes down and blinds the enemy. Now we've got a chance to bugger off. Um, the, like you said with the tanks, the only one I see getting something would be the paladin. Who could mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, hey, I'll just say it, just for the sake of it. It's been a while. Pops his spell, evac, dual shields, bash into the ground. Now we've got a chance to bugger off. There you go, you got it. <laughs> Those, but something like that, like or like like somebody said, <clears throat> doing it paladin style, he's gonna go and off himself for the group. He sacrifices himself. Right. Um. Um. Well, I mean, as long as it makes sense, mm -hmm. you know. But it has to be a kind of skill that you, if you have it, you probably want it on the bar. Yep. But it's one of those things that you're gonna even in a in a in a tight situation you're going to be eyeballing it and just hovering over that button going i don't know i just don't know mm -hmm. because that's where you kind of get a feel for your own character yeah if you if you know your character you know your group you you can easily determine if you need to use this yeah but if you're not super familiar with the people you're you're fighting with or you're not familiar with your class you might not use it at the right time. You might use it prematurely. You might use it too late. Yep. And that adds another level of skill to that character that might, depending on the class, be sitting behind the front line, potentially just twiddling your thumbs. Yep. I think that, um, you know, I, I totally agree. You've got to know your class and obviously know when you want to do it. But I do think you're going to have those groups that, that are going to hit cause trains to happen and yeah you don't want to be wiped out after hours getting down to a certain spot so get the hell out of there might be yep. the most prudent thing to do but well, it's like with, with a rogue with that smoke bomb idea you have to be mindful of back spawns meaning the stuff you've already killed behind you yeah but it could give you a chance to like reset that fight and back off a little bit gather yeah. yourselves let's try oh, this again. yeah I like that, yeah. Yeah. So but, there, there, there's there's like a big reason to have a row. But, I mean, having a wizard that could evac you to the entrance, it's still just as valuable in its own right. But, question I want to add, I want to add a twist to all of these evac situations. Should it be a spell that you earn 
or you get at a certain level and you can use it and it functions right away without error or would you like to see something where it might you know depending on your class depending on what you are it might not work right away or it might not work 100% it might only have a 33% functionality so maybe the rogue forgot to fill up his smoke powder right. now <laughs> He throws it down, and all you see is a little bit of dust going off, and the mobs still see it. You know, nothing's happened. Would you like to see something like that, where certain classes might have to, uh, you know, kind of skill it up and learn how well, to use it properly? If the if the monk has got to have a certain percentage and skill up his feigned death, I don't see why a rogue shouldn't have the same situation with the smoke bombs and things mm. like that. All right. This this to me comes down to that balance between. The cost of using this ability, mm -hmm. whether it be long, super long cast time, super long cooldown, an expensive reagent, a mixture of the three, or a chance to fail. Yep. It has to balance what you get out of it versus what you could lose. Yeah. And it has to balance it well so that it's majority of the time you're going to be fine, but there's that little party where you're like, using the rogue example, a good rogue is always going to be stocked on his powder say it's a reagent and it has a super super long cooldown he's always going to be stocked he's not going to use it just because you know so there's the yeah. skill with a just go i'll just go with wizard maybe that takes reagent too but it doesn't have as long of a cooldown because it has a huge cast time we'll say 20 seconds you know i know that's a little crazy but just bear with me it kind of balances out here yeah because both classes still have to make sure that they're stocked and ready for action. If they forget their reagent, well, that looks bad for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what compared to what they do, I feel that would actually be a, a pretty acceptable balance pending actual numbers. So, so, Moko again brings out a good point. Obviously as well, depending on what class you are, what evac ability you've got, it should be also situational. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to smoke bomb ghosts. No. The undead. Or anything like that. Oh, they, yeah. don't, they don't care about that. So, in that situation, you're shit out of luck. The rogue's not going to help you in that situation. But, but you know, then, on the other hand, uh, with the pa with the, the healer casting mm -hmm. down the light, you could actually damage those uh, undead while you're busy yeah. uh, stunning divine, them. Divine light, something like that, maybe. I mean, yeah. I you know, for the necromancer, I could see something where he summons, like similar to what the cleric's ability is going to be. The cleric can summon, you know, his 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 ultimate ability, the shield wall thing. I could mm -hmm. see the necromancer bring up a shield kind of thing, like a, like a wall of skeleton bones that you know mm -hmm. give us time to run away and stuff like that. So there's definitely room, and I do like the idea of having it have variants. So for the one, it might cost this much. For the one, it might have a longer usability. And, you know, so it's it's different and unique for each class. Um, right. And, it, you know, so we're going to have to think about when to use it. Yeah. When, well, ma making it different from class to class does a couple different things. If you have an abundance of people with that ability, you can pick and choose what you want. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if everyone's on the same level, they're all strangers, they're all the same level, you can pick and choose <laughs> which one will fit what you're doing most. Yep. Maybe you like the rogue one a lot because you don't want to have to go back and forth from the entrance all the time. Maybe you like the wizard one because it, it's usable more often. Who knows, right? Um, but even if you don't get to choose, say it's only wizards mm -hmm. that are ready, you have to know how to incorporate that into what you're doing, mm -hmm. which forces you to kind of learn a little bit and get to know other classes. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. And it, and it definitely... Uh, makes it interesting for all of us out there to want to try out all these different classes because they're all uniquely different. I mean, I'm already excited. I have to admit, I'm already excited for a bunch <clears throat> of classes out there that I've never played before. I've only played tanks and healers. But now I'm starting to be interested in the scouts and in the mages and, and stuff like that from, from what I've seen through the, through the streams and through the reveals of, of the classes, what they're trying to do. Hey, I want to try out a rogue, for sure. I've never played a rogue before. I never played a ranger before. I have, but you know, I haven't played a, a pantheon ranger. It's definitely sparked my interest, and this adds even more to it. So, 
I want to get into the interesting part about this discussion because we got <laughs> something that we were talking about off the air for a couple of days now. But before we do that, we've kind of accessed that binding should be available to everybody in some form or fashion, depending on your faction, where you are, who you want to, where you want to bind, you know, and obviously have different le levels. The question is, though, now, two questions, actually. Three, how often should you be able to use it? So if I travel from one town to the other, should I be able to bind there on the spot? Should it cost me something? Should it have a cool down? How free should people be able to choose their buying location? We've already accessed that with the possibility of having it related to the factions and everything. But one thing I want to talk about as well relating to the bind is veteran rewards. If Pantheon has any kind of system like that, we all know in EverQuest 2, and I think in EverQuest as well, Everybody got Call of the Hero, that, that little orb you could use to summon people to you oh, or yes. summon to people. Do you guys want to see something like that down the line? And if so, what kind of limitations would you like to see on it, um, if any? Or do you think it's just an awesome spell to have after being a, a veteran for six years or ten years or whatever they, they decide to do it? What do you think, guys? Um, I think it's I think it's a great thing to have. Um, I would, I would still, if somebody has been playing the game for 10 years, why not give them certain rewards that are, that are beneficial to, to him? Uh, and it just goes to show the loyalty that he shows to the game itself. I say, yeah, let's do it. I have, I have strongly mixed feelings about it. There's been plenty of times where I've absolutely loved it, especially in EQ2. Um, there has been times where I hate it because, as an example, I had taken a break from EverQuest 2 and I was enjoying the scenery again. Without even someone telling me anything, poof, I'm at a dungeon. It's like I was perfectly fine enjoying myself. Mm -hmm. We had a character that was stocking up on, on something or other, or getting getting some skills, and you just robbed me of some enjoyment. Mm. Well, you know, in in EverQuest two, you had to confirm it. You had to be in a group yeah. to 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 be able to you know actually summon somebody. So there should definitely be limitations. I would also like to see some kind of um, even though it's a reward item. I'd like to get the crafters maybe involved in this as well. So I'd like to have a maintenance on this item that I have to maintain. You know, it, right. it, it's a benefit. I can teleport to somebody. I can teleport some, or I can teleport myself to somebody yeah. um, throughout the world. Doesn't matter where they are. Um, but there has to be some kind of longer, either a very long call down for me to use it rather than just an hour, um, or I have to maybe maintain this item. I have to keep it top notch because maybe this item could also fizzle if I don't maintain right. it. So I think that, that that would be most probably my middle ground on how I would take that with you know the veteran reward and having that as an item because it definitely takes away from the game. Once you've got that reward, you have you know you have call of the veteran. Yeah, I got call of the veteran. We'll use that. You know, it's a right. you know a brand new player who hasn't he hasn't been he, he's been away from the game for ten years but you know he's he had an account he's got that reward because his account's ten years old he now misses the whole entire game he doesn't get to see it because well, we pull him over. That's where you rightly say there should be restrictions in place. I mean, I think when Call of the Veterans started, I think it was a half an hour uh, cooldown or an hour cooldown mm. on on being able to use it again. So it certainly wasn't something that was easily used and, and quickly used or very often. Mm. So if there are the proper time, timing restrictions on something like that, um, yeah, who, who knows? Uh, maybe it's a good thing. So uh, before we get into what we want to talk about, or I really am excited to talk about, and I'm sure Josh is as well, um, I mentioned the word crafting. Hmm. Teleportation and binding with crafters. Do you guys want to see anything done there in that in that perspective? Do you want to see crafters 
create some kind of scrolls or writs or gnomes that can create mechanical things that have a chance to teleport you or they have a chance to blow you the hell up. Yes. I would rather see player crafted convenience items over NPCs even at the cost of removing said type of convenience from perhaps additional classes. Mm. Because crafting it takes doesn't even take class into consideration. You know, I can be a warrior and I could craft a teleport thing, but maybe getting certain items is more difficult for me. Maybe getting an enchanted parchment is difficult for me to get. <laughs> I still have to find a wizard. Um, so that's where the difficulty lies for me. And yeah. if you take away the NPCs, honestly, it forces me to get to know my fellow gamers. There's going to be times where I really want nothing to do with the, with the public because every now and then I just kind of get all broody and want to just be left alone. But I still have to communicate with people in order to basically get what I want. Mm. Yeah. I definitely would like to see a mix as well. Oh, you know, have, have, have crafting come into it for certain crafters and everything. And, you know, offer also, again, a variance of teleportation um, abilities. In EverQuest 2, for instance, they had, <coughs> they had these tinkering portals that you could get. You know, you can yes. get a portal for that one zone, that one zone, that one zone. I like the idea of that, but it was very poorly executed because, hey, guess what? You had a druid, opens up a druid ring on the spot. You had, you had the, you know, you could, you, you had the portable bells as, as veteran rewards. You know, five of those. You, you ended up having like 50 bells that you could open up and travel around Noah. So <laughs> there should be limitations. If they're going to offer something like that, it should make sense. And it should be, you know, hey, it should be crafter only then. You know, maybe the crafters have the possibility to craft an item that takes you to a zone where you can't get them any other means. Doesn't matter if you've got a wizard, a druid, or anybody else. It's a, you know, only crafters can design this item, and it might take a lot of rares and stuff like that. I mean, it would make a lot more sense. Because, <clears throat> obviously... Getting, like, we'll just say teleportation scrolls. <coughs> yeah. That would still be something that would probably be much easier for a wizard, someone who might be able to teleport anyway, mm -hmm. to do. So it's almost like a craft that's designed for a teleporter, which is fine. Because, you know, you're, my, my first initial thought is that, you know, they're going to be crazy expensive. Yeah. But that's really not the case because every single teleporter is going to be crafting them. Yeah, because it's a way for them to make money through teleporting people without actually having to be there. Mm -hmm. It's just you have very narrow options because maybe maybe you can teleport to ten different places throughout the world, but you only craft scrolls to go to five. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Lex, you got to come up. You have to uh, bow out. Correct. Uh, I've got maybe 15 more minutes. We might make it. We might not make yeah. it in time. So let me know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let's go and move on to what we want to talk about. So, or at least I want to talk about. I think this is a cool idea. I don't know what you guys might think. You know, you might hate me for this. But we've all, we've talked about this, I think, in a few crafting shows and a few of the shows. You all remember the discussion on campsites. Player-built campsites. What about Very adding? Good. What about adding that to the binding? aspect of things as well where our you know our group we've got a group going we go out we've all got campsite you know availability to us and we can bind to that campsite when we set it up now there's different ways to look at this um one thing i've i thought about is maybe you know to, to, to vaguely go back to what we talked about originally is maybe you have different tiers for the campsite that we as players can basically opt to learn about. And it, it would give you a better defense or a better, you know, um, campsite itself. You know, mm -hmm. The tents might be more 
waterproof or lightning proof or whatever. Um, but you could also add maybe some additional um, NPC spells that you could access, similar to the Pack Pony or the Gatherer. So, so maybe Josh has opted out or gained access to having guards guard our campsite while we're out. We've put our campsite outside of Halnir's Cave. We're now going into Halnir's Cave to go and do, go on an adventure. Your campsite would de degenerate. It would it would it would, di it would digest. It would fall apart over time. But you could have guards maybe protect it because obviously there's still dangers out there. You could have maybe an NPC accessed that would go out and gather maybe some materials in the in the um, region around it. Maybe there's some some wood. Maybe there's some stone there or something like that. You can have all kinds of different stuff. But the use of the campsite for this is player built bind points. Mm -hmm. I like the idea. Um, I would say no to the NPCs. Mostly to, I don't like <coughs> the idea of offline gathering. I just, mm. it's too, it it, draw, it it crosses that line to too much convenience for me. Mm -hmm. um, I like it if it were, you know, you have to be certain distance away from a, a town or, or something like that. So you're for, essentially forcing your little campsite to be in the, in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. That comes with its own risks. Maybe you you travel to your, your campsite and now there's a grizzly bear that's four levels higher than you staring at your face and you, you're basically well, making, eat your face. You're making mm -hmm. peace with your gods because you picked a bad a bad campsite, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Josh? Yeah. Um I also am wary about NPCs per se. Uh, I I personally would if you are going to camp um, and and do that, um, you can set it up. Um, but I think your survival, a survival check as to where that campsite should be, should make that campsite safe enough for you to be able to to leave it there while you go adventuring. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's some degradation of that campsite over time, but. Um, not to the case that it's going to be trashed by something. So, um, with the campsite in mind, having it be a bind point for you, so when you die, you can you can bind yourselves back to that campsite, so you don't have the long distance to travel. Do you see any other uses? You know, would you like to see something like this inside a dungeon where you could put it down? I mean, Josh, we talked offline about something that you had a really cool idea with, um, which kind mm. of bounced off of my idea. Let's say, for instance, there are. We know there's going to be abandoned places and and buildings and everything in in the world itself. So my idea was basically maybe adding something where you could kind of take over that building, that abandoned ruin or something like that, as a campsite. And Josh kind of bounced in with the idea of a survival skill. Um, you want to explain you... that a bit? Yeah, so basically, just like you would have swimming and you would have uh, all, all other skills, uh, survival could be a skill that you have. Now, the higher your survival, the more, um, the more chance of you to find a spot within the wilderness or cave or something like that to set up a campsite. That is so safe. Safer. That's, uh, that's safe. So... You might not see it maybe in the first 50 points of your survival skill, but maybe from 75 or, or 50 to 100, uh, you'd be able to see a campsite that you've passed maybe 50 times before, and you now got the means to be able to, to fortify it so that uh, nothing can really attack you in that spot. Yeah, yeah so you just got the, those skills that you can build up over time. And as a ranger, you might get a, a natural... Proclivity to to have uh, a, survival, a high survival from the start, um, but everybody else should be able to still have that survivability because they're adventurers. Mm -hmm. I, I like that idea because to me that's like you know if you were to inspect an area, you might get like a, a very simple heat map of like the mobs. It's like oh, you can see that there has been activity in this area, so you don't want to set up a camp here. 
and that's entirely up to you if you want to risk it or not. Um, obviously, the more detailed, the higher the skill. Mm -hmm. But even when it says it's clear, there should be a chance that maybe it's not correct. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. So, so on that note, with that idea, um, instead of having a player-built campsite, let's say, for instance, in the world, there are indications of what used to be a campsite. And again, this could be a community, a group, a world event where we have to build them up again. And then they offer unique availabilities to us. Maybe mm -hmm. this one campsite has a um, anvil where we can repair stuff if we have a blacksmith with us. Yeah. Um, or in another one, there might be some, some, some ways to craft items or, you know, cook foods or something like that. So, because... Yeah, you I'm, could have somebody... I just want to jump in there. I mean, for cooking, for instance, you could use the surroundings to make food that is natural to, the, to that area. <coughs> yep. Cause, so, the wooded area. So, the way I yeah. see this, let's say, for instance, now, because we, you know, we saw Black Rose Keep. Black Rose Keep is a perfect example for why maybe something like this would be pretty cool to see. Let's say, for instance, in Black Rose Keep, there's three or four abandoned campsites. They're pretty safe. They're pretty remote. You know, it's a safe, it's a safe spot, but they have to be rebuilt by the community, by people. Um, and they have to basically maybe have a, maybe they have to have an upkeep. They have to keep on being, you know, being forced and whatnot because they, they, they degrade over time. But the reward for this is as well is it makes you come back there again and again. You know, it's it's the challenge of going back in there to 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 get because we want to go all the way down to the to the bottom level if there is a bottom level or the or the third bottom level into the dungeons into the catacombs of Black Rose Keep and but you know it's a long way down there it's a huge risk you know we've we've died multiple times already every time we get killed slaughtered again but now we might have found a campsite that we have to build up. So we build that up. Maybe it's something that's available then to the whole entire community on that server. You know, it's something that, it's a reward for everybody finding these campsites. It's, it's, it's a social thing, it's a social construct. Um, would you think that would be a pretty cool thing to do? Have, have like campsites remotely out there linked to the survival skill as well maybe? That could be found and then unlocked and have people come together to try and maintain it, build it up and everything with different reward systems towards it? I, I'm i always a fan of community builders. So, like, I, I do like that idea. I'd even like it to go towards, like, if I've just used <coughs> the wizard for the, the Nexus Spires and EverQuest 1 as an example... I would like each of those spires to have been a community event in order to activate it mm -hmm. through whatever means. I find them fun. I always meet interesting people at stuff like that. Um, and it really, it gives you that feeling down the road that the world is really is changing and you're making, like you have a hand in it, you know, versus, oh, it's there. Huzzah, let's just use it and keep going. Yeah, Definitely. Uh, Josh? Yeah, I think that... Um, let's repeat the question again. <laughs> so, having these campsites be something that, you know, the community builds or, you know, a group builds and maintain, do you think that's a good thing to have something like that where oh, you have yes, predetermined yes, yes, campsites yes, yes. in the game already rather than having the player campsites? Mm, yeah, I think I definitely think it's a it's a good idea. I think that that really helps uh, the the community itself to get together and make sure um, that these campsites are are well maintained. Because if you're going down the five or six levels down a dungeon and you come across a an abandoned campsite that is in wreck and ruin and you can't use it because it hasn't been maintained, you're going to be pretty annoyed. So I would love to just uh, keep that going, and, and I think it'll be a good thing for the community. Yeah. So in comparison with the player-built campsite, the way, I would, the way I've always pictured it is if you can bind to it, it would be something that's remotely outside. 
So you couldn't you couldn't go into a dungeon, go down levels and levels and levels, put down put down your player built campsite, bind to it. You know that would be always something that's always outside. Basically, a shorter means back into that. That's how I would always see the player built campsite um, in comparison to to the other one. Now the question is. If they did have predetermined campsites, however they do it, community build, if it's, it's something to do with survival skill as well, to unlock them, to find them, so not, not everybody can find them or whatever, would you like to see a bind point to that as well? Or do you think it should only be a campsite that binds you while you're in that zone? If you mm. leave, you can't, you can't, you know, get yourself back there. You can't, because, you, you know, you can't use a bind spell and you're ported back into Black Rose Keep, third level at the bottom at that campsite to me it should be you, you would do this because you would set up a campsite because that's where you want to spawn <coughs> when you die mm -hmm. for as long as it's there mm -hmm. meaning that if it's not there then you fall back to whatever was before that which is going to be a real bugger to code if they were to ever do that but it would kind of make sense it's like, oh, I, I'm going to bind myself here in, in the middle of a dungeon because it is a camp spot. It's clear. It's it's safe. But it's only there for so long. Mm -hmm. And if I were to log back in, I'd have to rebuild it. Or maybe I, I log back in in the middle of a train and I die, but the campsite's not there. Well, now I'm back and thrown fast and I'm cursing up a storm. I'm going to have to rely on the community to, to give me a hand. Yeah. Yeah, I I I don't want yeah, I don't I'm I'm very undecided as to how this would play out to be honest. Um yes, I would like it, but no, I wouldn't. I don't want the game to become cheap and menial as to uh, you being able to bind wherever you feel like it. Well, not wherever you feel like it, but whichever campsite you come across. Uh but I don't want it to you've put in two days worth of work just to find yourself back out and not yeah. being able to get back down there. Or you, so, yeah, you worked hours on end to get down to that final level and you, your, your PC crashes or somebody yeah, messes something up out group, of your control. Something out of your control and now you're screwed. You're back at the very beginning. You've got to work all the way back down again. So it's, 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 def it's definitely a touchy thing. That's why for me, I think it should be... No, I would be. Ex I would accept it to be to the point where, as long as I'm inside that zone, I'm bound to that site. I'm safe. But if I go out of that zone for whatever reason, that's it. I'm I'm out of luck. I'm not going to make my way back down there to bind. Um, one thing I want to touch on before we cut it off completely. Cause I'm sure we're going to talk about this more after we know more about it. But guilt. In EverQuest 2, I don't know if this was an EverQuest. Um, I don't know if it's... I'm sure it was in other games as well. But guilds had the opportunity through guild levels, through unlockables and everything, to get themselves a guild flag. That they could plant somewhere in the world and have people, the whole guild or the whole raid, zone to that flag. Do you want to mm -hmm. see something like that in the game as well? Well... I'm pretty sure a lot of us out there know that getting raids together, getting everybody there, is kind of like herding cats blindfolded. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I, I like that functionality for the simple fact that it, it helps raids go smoother. They're, they're long events anyway. Um, so saving yourself the hour setup time and getting it down to maybe 15, 20 minutes is a huge <clears throat> blessing. Yeah. Um, if you make it expensive enough, uh, yet again, I'm going in with this, um, to where you don't want to do this for, for groups unless you're like really, really have to or you just want to sink the funds. Um, I think it would work decently well. Yeah. Because the problem with EverQuest 2 is that it was so inexpensive <coughs> that I found people doing it to like when they're trying to get their 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 multi box groups together, or mm -hmm. one person went AFK and 
they're like, well, I don't want to wait around for my dual partner. I'm going to go there with the flag, plant it, and then they yep. can just pop up. Or camping, you know, NPCs, certain NPCs. I, 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 I've had people do that too, where they'd actually have uh, groups ready to just go, yep. boom. And I thought that was, that was something that I would have done years and years and years ago. So <clears throat> I know it was a pretty, pretty shitty move. Gosh, your take on banning a flag of some, of some sort for the whole entire guild or raid or group? Um, yeah, I agree with Lex. I think getting 20 odd people together on the best of days and getting them all all into one area at once is is a bit of a nightmare for, for most uh, guild leaders. Um, and that's why they throw themselves out of windows from time to time. Um <laughs> So, yeah, I think that if you've got some way of maybe having specific people, just similar to the Warlock in uh, WoW, that can open up a, a portal to, to get people in from, from one area to the next. Mm -hmm. I think that's how it worked, if, if, if yeah. memory recalls. Um, but, yeah, have something like that that maybe uh, is is built around specific players that, that are needed um, for you to be able to get them there. And if it's re reputation-based, so be it as well. Cool. So um, we'll definitely be talking more on teleportation and mining in, in, the, in the future, especially when uh, VR starts to talk about it themselves and reveal what their plans are for long-distance travel, short-distance travel, player-based travel, etc. Um, Shy, any questions from chat or any thoughts, ideas, concerns? Yes, um, we have a few. Uh, let's see, from Glenn. Um, he was wondering, if building faction is required to bind, should that decrease faction with opposing cities? Why and why not? Depends. Yeah. If, if the two factions are rivals, then yeah, it would make sense. Um, unless you could find a way, because the, the obvious way to get faction would be to kill their enemies. If you were doing something that didn't really bother the other side, I see no reason why they would hate you more just for helping them out. Because obviously, if you if it was a situation like that, you're probably going to hit a situation where you choose one or the other, and then they kind of like you, they they really hate you. You know, and then either way, if you want to, if you want to spend the time grinding them both, you have to do so carefully, and it might be a huge pain. I don't see why you would deny players that, mm -hmm. as long as it made sense. Yeah. Okay. Next, um, from Grizzly, would could the collective build an embassy in opposite cities? A certain amount of players paying faction points to have an embassy built in that city. Interesting. I, I I myself love that idea. Yeah, I think um, it's a good idea. When it when it comes to stuff like that, I'm all for it. Um, that would actually even make it really interesting for the game itself, where maybe the races of different, you know, opposing cities, different cities have to build up an embassy for them to actually access it. So, so the Scar who hate everybody. You want to bind there for whatever reason it might be. You know, you have to build an embassy there. And that could be a player event. That could be a world event. That could be a global event. Um, I definitely like that idea. Um, yeah. It's, I don't know if that would necessarily have a, a place in Pantheon yeah. per se. But I would really, really like to see that in a future MMO for sure. Yep. At least someone to have, to have the, you know, I could, the dangly bits to try it. If they if they had politics in some form or fashion in in Pantheon, then that's where it could fit in. You know, that, that's 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 related to a politics system. Um, you know, maybe hey, even if they have diplomacy, maybe you know, it could if they have something in some form or fashion of diplomacy, that would be a cool thing to add. Not necessarily for the normal PVE server, but for those RPers out there, they'd get a kick out of it. Oh yeah. Okay, um, from Glenn, he'd like to know if you guys think there should be any racial bonuses towards different types of travel, and if so, what? Hmm. That's a tough one. 
um, because well, travel does take up an awful lot of time. Even minor bonuses can really Lex. skew what the fish can fish swim faster. Well, yeah, I mean, I can understand <laughs> swimming faster. That's travel, but <laughs> that's a means of but travel. If you, but we'll say, for instance, something such as caravans come faster for this character. It's like, mm-hmm. no. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to like just regular movement speed on land, where the majority of the game is likely to take place, um, they tend to cause more of a division in the community than anything. So, like, like innate run speed bonuses, I tend to just kind of back away from that kind of stuff because it's... You wouldn't think it's such a big deal, but it actually is. Yeah. I, I don't think that factions per se should have any inherent run speed over another class to be to be quite honest you're going to get um, uh, fat dwarves and skinny dwarves you're going to get f- fat ogres and ogres that have been power lifting since they were babies so yeah I think that running speeds shouldn't really matter yeah okay um, from Glenn again, what kind of fees, if any, should there be for travel or binding? To me, it would depend on the distance that it's going. So if you're taking a fast travel, it's only going to take you two zones over. Just as an example, we'll say 10 gold. But if it's taking you to another continent that's going to be probably 30, 40 gold, you know, obviously subject to change for balancing. But to me, it would be on the cost would be proportional to how much time it's actually saving me. Yeah. So it's like, like driving a taxi, short distance taxi, two stops, two blocks down the road is going to only cost you five bucks, but going like 20 blocks down the road is going to cost you 50 bucks. Mm hmm. And then, obviously, if you're going from one continent to the other, that should cost you even more. Okay. Um, infamous Jack would like to know, should a druid and wizard have some kind of mechanic that when they both link teleportation, separate from the standard solo teleports, creating a super teleport, would that teleport you to a convenient and popular location? It teleport you to a different planet. I would love to see some kind of <laughs> teamwork teleportation because I mean, we've seen spells in the past where God, I don't remember what game it was where two casters would have to like coordinate this certain spell and it would combine to be like a super version of that spell and it's almost those what's that, I don't know what Dragon Ball is it almost turned it into a freaking Kamehameha wave and you're like what on God's earth was that thing? If they were to do something like that with teleporting, like say maybe what it does is it can open a portal that can take you anywhere. Granted, that'd be a little overpowered. I understand this, but it would still be an interesting concept to at least play with or explore. Yeah, you could have like you could you could add a higher risk to it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's dangerous to do that. If it fails, the game server shuts down. <laughs> you get you, you know you actually you, you you get brought back to level one. Oh god you have to start over it, again yeah it gives you amnesia in a random zone yeah. you're level it turn, one again it turns your it turns your scar dire lord into a into a human paladin uh thank god delete and re-roll thank you <laughs> not only am i not only would i be boring but i'd also be a little wimp yeah, <laughs> well, I do like the idea of um, you know combinations, you know, like experimentation sort of thing, where you have a high risk and who knows what the hell could happen. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like with Elder Scrolls games, the single player. Not that dreadful excuse for an MMO. Um, one of my favorite things in that game was actually crafting the spells. You know, so 
if they add anything where you can just kind of tinker around, I'm all for it. Even if it's like you and a, another teleporter well, would get together and try to do some crazy stuff, like, oh, yes. But what about, I will roll a wizard just for that. But what about, uh, somebody brings up a, a, a cool idea on this, raged and blazed. Maybe like the difference between a solo port or a party port. Maybe that's the that's only way to group travel. You have to have yeah. either a druid and a wizard, or a druid, uh, a wizard, <laughs> and maybe a whatever, whoever else can summon. Or just two, or just two teleporters. We'll or say. two teleport, like two wizards, for instance, or whatever. It's, the spell two. requirement requires one other teleporter. That would make it really interesting. Yeah. I actually, I actually like that idea of Asian Blaze, where maybe we can only all teleport people one at a time. But if you have two in a group, guess what? You can teleport the entire group now. Or the entire raid, or whatever. That's that's. I don't know how that how well that would balance. I'm not going to sit here and run the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it, it's an interesting prospect. I think the novelty of it is great. Yeah. Um. So I'd be willing. I if if Vieira were to play with that idea, I'd be all for it just to see how how it actually works out. Yeah. Same. Okay, next is from Glenn. Should travel routes have certain times of day that are open for business? So should certain travel routes occasionally be closed due to repairs, world events, weather, etc.? Definitely. I would love oh, that. Oh, yeah. I would yeah, that would be great. I agree as well. Yep. Hands down. Agreement. And the next question, um, again from Glenn. If wizards can teleport people... Should there be a chance that something goes wrong, such as splinching for the Harry Potter fans? <laughs> that sounds like a very that sounds like a very dirty word, so I'm just gonna say yes. Who's Harry Potter? <laughs> so yeah. Why am I why am I watching a Harry guy do pottery? There should there should be you know, like I, like we mentioned at the very beginning, you know, you're gonna have to learn about all these different locations to teleport and open up portals and whatnot and there should still be a risk you know you should still have to you know be able to kind of you have to learn how to control that magic because i mean open up the portal or, or sending somebody from one place to another as a wizard that takes a lot of concentration a lot of energy out of you so there That's should a be a big risk deal. there yeah. should be a risk i totally agree With and great finally, power comes great responsibility and risk. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, from Glenn, what if bards could use music to call forth a being to take the group somewhere? Well, basically, I'd run away anyway. I would, I would, I would teleport fast travel myself if a bard started playing music in front of me. <laughs> so it's 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 an automatic. Uh, mm -hmm. Function I'm, already. <laughs> I'm still very much a fan of a traditional bard where you know he does the 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 song that makes everyone goes go super fast, Celos Accelerado, for those yeah. who are not familiar with EverQuest. Um, because you know everyone had to stay together or you basically got left behind. It and almost Jello's felt like a, Yeah, and it almost felt like a guided tour. And yeah. with a bard being a bit of a vagabond, you kind of expected that. Having a bard, you know, through music, give you run speed, or any, you know, any other situation like that. But teleportation, I can't, I, I can't see, I can't see it working. But for the run, you're know, having a faster run speed, and like, like Lex mentioned, being in a radius for it to actually affect you. That's as far as I would go when it comes to that. Um, teleportation. I don't know. Take me on that magic carpet ride. We're we're sailing in the yellow submarine. I don't know. <laughs> God, now, it's, now, the, now the rhythm's stuck in my head. <laughs> da, 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 da. The, oh, the, sad, the sad thing is that's that's one that's one song I used to be able to play on my play all the time oh. on my guitar. So that's all the questions, is it, Shay? That is all of them. We are done. Awesome. So, guys, thanks again for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this discussion. There will definitely be more coming on teleportation and binding as soon as we um, all get the information from VR and the ideas and what they want to do themselves to, to uh, see where they're going with it. And we'll see what other crazy ideas and thoughts we, we have on this. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Um, 
A lot Next. of this information might not be accurate, but we had a lot of fun talking about it. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um, next week, we will be talking about the cleric. We'll be carrying on our series with the archetype and subclass. Um, just to clarify again, it's not necessarily to be taken in that sense. It's more of a ways to add flair and uh, different situations to these classes, giving us ways to make them uniquely different within their class themselves and offer different kind of different play styles for everybody but still stay true to the class itself that's what those discussions are for and we'll be touching on the cleric next week and um after we've gone through this series or actually beforehand we'll be touching on the actual class reveals itself as well and uh, talking about those and what we think about the class reveals so look forward to those shows upcoming. But next week will be the cleric, and we'll have Basgum joining us, um, a lifelong cleric fan himself, to discuss this with us. And uh, we'll see you all next Friday. And uh, we hope you have a great weekend. And um, yeah, we'll see you Catch all next week. Catch you all week. soon. Yeah, be Take safe, care. everybody.